right, here we go, rock and roll. Okay, here we are with lesson number 10. Thanks for tuning in, and I know you've been practicing hard, and we're getting better. So tell all your friends about these courses, because I know that everybody out there wants to get better on their guitar. Okay, so let's take a look at one of our new voicings and chords we're going to learn today. We've already expanded on our open E chord that became our movable bar chord on the sixth string. We, we showed you how to play the A chord that became the movable form on the fifth string. We also showed you how to play the C form that became the movable shape that moved up along the fifth string as well. Okay, well, check it out. What have we left out? We haven't covered the G chord yet. Okay, now what do you think was going to happen to the G chord? It's a great chord in this position. We've learned a lot of great tunes with it, and we've actually been able to play some music with this great G chord. But what happens when we go to A flat? That's not going to work. We can't make any music with that kind of a sound. Okay, so you know from experience that what we've been doing is we've been figuring out how to form the nuts with our usually grabbing our first finger and replacing it down here. So that's what we're, exactly what we're going to do with the G form. So instead of fingering it like this, we have to put the third finger on the root, the second finger on the third, and our fourth finger on the top, and we can bring it up to this. And we've got kind of a, a large grip here, but you can play it with all your fingers if you'd like. Okay, okay so we know that the, the open G chord now can be played with a fretted movable shape by simply replacing the open nut here with our first finger. And we've got this form right here that works so great. Okay? And you can even play it with a high root on top, which is usable as well, but I kind of like this form. And I just don't, I don't play the high E string. Okay, so now this is our root here with our fourth finger. So G, like this, now gets played like this. Okay, so this is what I've drawn out here. Here's the open G, and then here's the bar chord shape. Okay. So we've, now we've got another six string root where we only had this one before. Now we've got another version of the chord that we can play like this. So we've got a different option on our six string. So we've got two different options for our fifth string root, right? Now we've got two different options for our sixth string root. Okay, so we're really getting our little chords together. That's four different uh, major chords that we've learned to use in bar chord form, okay? Um, so let's make sure that we're studying those and working hard on those. Okay, and I'm gonna make up a progression here in a minute that's gonna utilize this new major chord. Okay, but let's go back to something to uh, just continue studying and learning the names of the notes on the string here, on the uh, D string in this case. Okay, we've been studying the names of the notes on the E string and on the A string, but what about the D string? We need to know where those notes are too. Okay, so let's do that for a minute. And make sure that you understand where the notes are because we're gonna use these for all the chord voicings from here on, okay? So, we've got the open D, of course. step you can come to the E note, the second fret of the D string, and then we know that half step here between the E and the F is B and the C, so that makes this, the next natural note is F, so D, E, F, and then we've got a whole step again to G, and a whole step again to A, and a whole step again to B, and then we get the, the next half step, natural note is C right there next whole step is right there, which is the octave of the D. Okay, so D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Okay, we're going to need to know where these roots are along this string here because we're going to learn a chord on our next lesson that's going to need to find roots on that string. Okay, so let's talk about how we can start drilling and processing all these all this information in a way that we can really be cave. You'll notice that I've drawn this circle on the board here. And this circle represents the order of the keys in terms of the, uh, 
keys as they add sharp and flats. It's called the circle of this, and I wrote that over there. Okay, so we'll talk about this more in later lessons, but just so you know, the key of C is the, the, third, uh, the first key that you begin studying music with generally because it has no sharp or flats in it. So it's basically all the white keys on the piano, if you want to talk about what it would look like on the piano. And the first key that adds a sharp is the key of G. Okay, and then it adds one sharp. But as we go down around the circle, we add sharps. If we go this way, if we go this way, we add flats. Okay, so for our purposes today, it's just simply a way to uh, practice our root game. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to start off by um, establishing a note. In, in this case, we'll start off with C, and I want you to play all the C's that you know now with the roots on the various three strings that we've been studying. So in this case, we'd have three different positions to play C's on. We have the E string root, right? We have the fifth string or A string root, which is the third fret of the A string. And now we know it's also on the 10th fret of the D string, as we just learned. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have us go around the circle of fifths and we're going to practice grabbing the notes in time and finding them on three different strings that we can uh, we can practice with now. Okay, so let's make sure I've got a good metronome here for us and then we can practice playing this in time. Let's do it nice and slow so we can t take the time to find these. But let's start off with the C to the top and I'll call each key as we go through it, okay? And we're going to start with the E string first, then go to the A string and the D string, okay? We start with the C. Here we go. One, two, three, C. Okay, A string. Okay, D string. Let's do the D string again. Okay, let's go to G. E string. A string. D string, and do the D string again. Okay, the next key is D, E string, A string, D string, and you can even do that open. Okay, A on the E string, A on the A string, or open, and A on the D string. Let's do that again. Here comes the E on the E string, E on the A string, and the E on the D string. Okay, here comes B on the E string. Okay, on the A string, and on the D string. Now we're going to go to the flat notes. Keep going. G flat on the E string. This might be more difficult for you if you're not used to thinking of flat notes. And the D string. Okay, here comes D flat on the E string. Okay, here it is on the A string. And on the D string, the 11th fret. flat on the E string, the 11th fret of the A string, and the 6th fret of the D string. Okay, I know this is a very exciting. E flat, here we go. 6th fret of the A string, and the 1st fret of the D string. Here we go, coming up to the B flat. Three. Four, E string. Here it is, first fret of the A string, the eighth fret of the D string, and our final key goes to F, E string, the eighth fret of the A string, and the third fret of the D string. Okay, so, 
it's just a simple exercise that will develop your knowledge of the root on the bottom three strings. And ultimately, you're going to want to know the, the names of the notes all over the fingerboard as you're, as you're getting more experience and you play more and you read music and you get better at, at reading in different positions, you're going to learn this information. But for right now, it's really important for us in terms of rhythm guitar because we need to find roots on our strings. Generally, we refer to the roots mostly from the bottom three strings. Not all the time, but most of the time from the bottom three strings. So that's why I'm spending time working on this exercise, okay? So keep working on that. And if this exercise was too fast, then do the same exercise at home, but put it on a slower tempo and practice it. Maybe just, just one string at a time. Maybe just practice two strings at a time. Eventually you'll combine all three and you can speed the tempo up, okay? So now we're gonna go back and we're gonna check out our G form chords, and we're, we're going to come up with some new progressions to utilize this chord. Okay, I'll see you in a second.